الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد ايها الحبه في الله in order to have our deeds accepted two conditions have to be in place first that we have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ikhlas lillah secondly that we follow the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam with regards to those deeds of ibadah that worship so for example the person who fasts if they fast and they have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fast but yet they fast like the Jews fast maybe they only eat certain products or they cut out only dairy products this is not considered islamic fasting and it will not be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why because one of those conditions which is what is following the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was not met and likewise a person who fasts and they meet the condition of following the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they fast from uh from sunrise to sunset and they avoid those things which are prohibited they don't eat drink nor have sexual relations but however they do it to please the people to show their family that they can do it or to show that they're hungry to sort of show off as a form of piety to the people then in this case they miss the first condition which is sincerity to Allah azza wa jal ahabatu fillah say this because one of the problems we face as a human community not just as muslims is that we fail to communicate with one another and sometimes people don't have the means or even the friends to be able to communicate and this is a problem and islam has the answer for that problem however the problem is is when we don't practice allah commands us to be brothers the salat is a means to establish that brotherhood for the men in the masjid that's why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said salat al jamaa is better than salat than the one who prays by himself by 27 times or 25 times in another narration and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ta'awwana bi birr wa taqwa cooperate in piety or righteousness and god fearfulness cooperation working together so this necessitates knowing the situation of your brother that when your brothers and sisters are feeling isolated and they're away from the community this is when the problems begin to appear and we see this in the non-muslim communities we had columbine we had all these high school shootings and it just has become uh almost an annual more than an annual event at universities and college uh, universities colleges community colleges and high schools people are coming in uh with weapons and killing killing their colleagues and then killing themselves shooting their teachers for no reason mainly because they feel isolated and then those external things begin to distort their hearts and distort their reality and their perception of the world and they begin to hate and they begin to want to emulate the evil that they see in the cinemas and the evil that they see in the films and that's being propagated by hollywood and other forms of media and that which they hear in the music ahabatu fillah we've got to stop this isolation 
The reason I say this is because I know personal cases, personal situations, or people that I've known who due to this isolation because they didn't share what they were thinking. They didn't share what was going on in their heart. They didn't seek the necessary counseling, Islamic counseling and advice from the people who were elders in their community, the people who had more knowledge in their community, the people who could have helped them in their community, then they went astray. I know people who've committed murders. People who have, uh, uh, who are wanted for, who are in prison now for a conspiracy of doing this, a conspiracy to do this. Why? Because they isolated themselves. They didn't go to the people of knowledge. They didn't seek knowledge from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the Salaf. Instead, they took something from the religion and with their distorted understanding and what they learned from the YouTube and what they learned from the internet and then they isolated themselves and practiced wickedness thinking they were coming closer to Allah. But instead, they were going further from Allah. But if only those youth had shared with us, so we could have helped them. People who in, invite them to knowledge. Brother, we, we'll teach you. Brother, would you like to, I, I'm having a lecture on this. Brother, would you come? No. Instead, they get their own understanding of Islam. And some of them end up locked up for life. Ahabatifillah, this kind of danger, we have to, as a community, begin to form some sort of outreach, some way to reach these people. And one of the ways is encouraging the youth to seek knowledge, Islamic knowledge, and seeking Islamic knowledge from those people who are trained in Islamic knowledge and those people who invite to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not inviting to themselves not inviting to their methodology, not inviting to extremism, not invi inviting to throwing away the principles of Ahl Sunnah. No. We invite them to those people who are calling the Kitab or Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. Because that's a success, I have to lie. So it's knowledge. And also we have to reinforce and re-strengthen the brotherhood in our communities. We can't leave new Shahadas to themselves. Someone just newly embraces Islam and you're not giving him the love and the brotherhood. Well, then what is he going to do? What is he or she going to do? They're going to look for that love and that brotherhood outside. They're going to go back to the gangs they were in. They're going to go back with the crew they used to hang with. They're going to go back with the prostitutes they used to sell with. They're going to go back with the drug dealer who's on the block. They're going to go back to the religion that they used to be upon because they felt love, because they felt included. We can't isolate people anymore. We have to begin to open up. Show them that that's the madhab of the Prophet ﷺ is good manners and brotherhood. The Prophet ﷺ said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَالظُّنْ فَإِنَّ الظُّنْ أَكْذِبُ الْحَدِيثِ وَلَا تَحَاسِدُوا وَلَا تَجَاسِسُوا وَلَا تَبَاغِدُوا وَلَا تَدَابِرُوا وَكُلُّوا إِبْعَادَ اللَّهِ إِخْوَانِدُ The Prophet ﷺ said, be brothers. Be brothers or worshippers of Allah, be brothers. And don't spy on one another. Don't cut one another off. Don't cheat one another. Don't hate one another. That's what Islam calls to. But if you continue to allow the youth to go astray and isolate one another, we also have to watch out for bullying. Because that's one of the, we can't be there all the time. And as elders, they might not be able to relate to us. But we need our youth to be trained. Teach your sons and daughters not to be bullies, not to be of those people who isolate their brothers and sisters. Because if they do, we're going to feel as a community the danger of that isolation. This is why we have brothers and sisters going out there doing crazy things. Or one of the reasons. Because... There wasn't anything there in the community for them. There wasn't even, uh, in fact, much of a community. So, Habatifillah, strive your, your best to seek Islamic knowledge from sound authorities in Islamic knowledge. And worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And 
extend a hand to your brothers and sisters in the faith. And even go outside the community if you see people being isolated. Maybe this will be the reason that they come to Islam. Because if you want to know why, why do the young girls find a home in gangs and find a home with the pimps? They feel warmth from a pimp, the one who's forcing her to sell her body and making a profit off her. But he gives her a certain kind of feeling. He knows how to speak to her. He knows how to be that father figure, that, that husband, that boyfriend, that comfort zone. We've got to counter that, Ahabitif Allah. We've got to be that comfort zone. We've got to establish those pillars for the community. And, we, and I ask Allah the Almighty to forgive us of our many sins and bless us to be of those pillars to set those examples. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our shortcomings and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to practice what we preach and begin these efforts right now. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with ikhlas, with the bat, and to help our youth, the youth around the world. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.